You know, I don't have the sea around my house, but I don't hate it. It's just I don't always have it around me. So there are two points in today's video. First, I just wanted to come and see the sea to feel the nice beach vibe, which is actually pretty nice because usually I'm a mountain guy. So I thought sometimes the beach would be nice and fresh. And second, through this vlog, I want to talk about this camera, FX30. I mean, it's more like lenses for this camera. So what lens should we use for this FX30? It's a PC camera, but a lot of people including me are using full frame lenses, like the big but great quality but expensive lenses. Because FX30 is not a typical easy APS-C camera. People want to use full frame lenses for this. I think it's good, but we almost forget that we can simplify the system. We can reduce the weight and size because we can use small, light, budget, relatively APS-C lenses for this FX30. I think the biggest strength of this camera is the high mobility and usability with a great video performance. To maximize that, using APS-C lenses is easiest way. But are APS-C lenses any good? Don't worry, that's what I'm here for today. So today I will show you guys my personal three best APS-C lenses for FX30. Before getting into this video, please hit the subscribe if you haven't to grow this channel. I need your support. We want to reduce the gear as much as possible, especially when we vlog, travel, or just hang out with friends and family. So the first one is the right middle of the classic choice, which is Sony 16 mm f2.8 G lens. Well, it's a little expensive, $1,400, but what you get is more than that. If you have it on FX30, all shots are guaranteed. First of all, although this has from 16 to 55mm and f2.8, it only weighs 1.09 pounds, and it's small like this. I wouldn't say tiny, but this doesn't bother me at all. The balance when it's on a camera is not that bad, and this has AF, MF switch and one custom button. So also, it has a great form factor. Also, this has the amazing Sony G lens image quality. It's so clear and sharp. You know, G Master lens is more like a crispy monster, but this one is mild and gentle, virtually in a good way, which I really love. I mean, the sharpness and digital depiction is not that different from the full frame of 2470 f2.8 lens. If you're thinking like APS-C lens, okay, that is beginner's entry level, almost toy lens. You are damn wrong. I will introduce two more lenses today, but if you just have this 16-55mm f2.8, you're good, like forever. So if you want to make your shooting environment, shooting system simple as much as possible, just get only this lens. And also Sony Genuine G lens means 100% autofocus performance of this camera. Sony cameras tend to show their true autofocus ability on Sony Genuine lenses. This is Sony APS-C G lens, so that means it's perfectly designed for Sony's APS-C camera, like this. FX Edit's autofocus is one of best autofocus in the market right now, and this lens can bring it out without losing any small drop of ability. This is one of huge reasons why I recommend this lens for FX30. The end of story, the end of this vlog comes right now because the wind is extremely strong and you know I'm losing the light. You know the thing is getting so dull right now. Yeah but you know nice place. So yeah. Well, let's do some image stabilization test at the last of this vlog. So now, uh, 16 to 55 mm 2.8 G lens and F 6.3 60 mm just normal image stabilization mode, but I think it's pretty good. Oh, wind is strong. My hair is getting so messy. It's out of my control. So I guess this is the end of this vlog but i have two more lenses which i have to introduce in this video so i'm gonna pass this this topic to me in the studio i think i want to chill in my car so one of the biggest flaws of this camera is i mean aps cameras in general is crop factor you know, Sony APS-C cameras have 1.5 times crop. So even 
the 16 to 55 mil lens is gonna be like a 24 to 80 mil, something like that. So widest angle will be 24 mil. You know, so that's why you need an ultra wide angle zoom lens for FX30, which I'm using right now, which is Tamron 11 to 20 mil f2.8. So sometimes, for no particular reason, I want to chill in my car. You know, it took so much time and effort, energy to make this, let's call it, uh, live in a band kit. I built this from a scratch, but the reality is I don't use this that much. So sometimes I want to, you know, achieve the purpose which is originally supposed to be. I should do this more. So why this lens? Why Tamron 11 to 20 mil f 2.8? There are more choices like a Sony 10 to 20 mil f 4 G lens or Sony 10 to 18 mil f4 like oss lens first of all although it's cheaper than sony 10 to 20 mil it has f2.8 while sony is f4 and sony 10 to 18 mil is cheapest but it's old lens like a 2012. for me the best super wide angle zoom lens would be either of sony 10 to 20 mil and tamron 11 to 20 mil Usually, I don't need f2.8 for wide-angle zoom lens, but since FX30 is APS-C camera, so it's like, okay, yeah, let's have what I'm allowed to. So, 11 to 20 mil means about 16 to 30 mil in full frame, which provides you this type of super dynamic wide shot and standard perspective at 20 mil. And if you get close to the subject like this and use 20 mil f2.8, you can get this kind of dramatic good tight shot you know look at this bucket and those come with this light small package and it's about 0.7 pounds 700 dollars so the biggest reason to have this lens is the focal length you know 11 mil can give me this you know wide vlogging shot and also it can reduce the additional crap when it's 4k 120 fps and image stabilization active mode and also image quality is good. You know, it's not best like a G lens or G muscle lens, but I think it's more than what we need for daily basis use. In my opinion, super wide angle lens is not for a killer shot, like a 50 mil 1.2 G master. It's more like a easy, versatile go-to choice, but it got good sharpness and color. I don't see any big flaw in image quality. Although it has a distortion at 11 mil, but that is what it comes with super wide angle. 11 mil. I don't say it's a terrible, but it just there is. And this is relatively new, like a uh, it's 2021 lens. So the autofocus performance is of course good. It can catch up with FX Steady real time tracking autofocus. So if you want to have a happy life with FX Steady, I think you're gonna need some you know super wide angle zoom lens, and for that, this Tamron 11 to 20 mil f 2.8 is a great option. Standard f 2.8, super wide f 2.8. Sure, you can shoot pretty much everything with them, but you want something faster. So the last one is prime lens, which is Sigma 30 mil f 1.4. This is also APS-C lens, and the greatest thing about this lens is this is just. $340. That's the APS-C magic. It's 30 mil prime and f1.4, but it's freaking light and small. APS-C system made this come true. It doesn't have any switches, it's very simple, but I love this design. You know, this luxury feel. FX Study has a bunch of buttons, so this simple lens design, lens structure doesn't bother me at all. FX Study is APS-C camera, so when it comes to bokeh and low light, I feel not so confident, so that's why you need a 1.4 prime lens. Look how much of bokeh this can produce. 30mm is about 45mm in full frame. So 45mm f1.4, that's a banger. You want to have the ability to shoot this kind of powerful shot. And I like this sharpness. I can't believe this is only $340. Sigma is always natural and neutral. The sharpness is not too much. But definitely I love this crispy image. But it gets a little soft when it's f1.4, 1.8. Maybe that is because of the price, the quality of the lens itself. You want to go up like f2.8 to get the maximum sharpness from this lens. 
and the color is neutral. Sigma doesn't have a particular uniqueness. Well, that could be a both of pros and cons, but I think it's easy to color grade. So I don't hate it, but I don't particularly, specially love it. Just neutral when it comes to color. Honestly, I think this is the top level image quality in APS-C lenses, although it's just $340. The autofocus is not super, super fast when it's f1.4. Well, it's pretty fast in this simple motion, but when it comes to tracking, not slow, but it's very gradual focus move. Not bad, but not the best. But still, it's more than the price. I can't expect more than this. So today, I showed you three lenses, but most of times, most of scenarios, most of cases, Sony 1655mm f2.8 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 is pretty enough. That is the most budget option in the long term. It can fit in the small bag like this and the size weight wouldn't bother you at all. But it produces the high quality video, the number one lens for FX30. But it's a little expensive, $1400, so here are some alternative plans. Sigma 1850mm f2.8, Tamron 1770 f2.8. If you want to know about this more, just let me know in the comment below. I might make some comparisons for that. But having Tamron 11 to 20 mil and Sigma 30 mil can expand your creativity. You can go without them for a while, but you're gonna need them at some point in a long journey. So when that time comes, just remember this video. Remember me recommending those two lenses. I think there are more great APS-C lenses out there. So if I find some favorite one, I will make a video again. So I don't say don't use full frame lenses for FX30. Even I sometimes use them, but I don't want you to think like, you know, full frame lenses are big and cool. It's heavy, uh, massive, looking cool, feels like a real, a true solid glass APS lens, it's a small and tiny, it's a toy, but it's not. Now, let's appreciate, oh, now let's appreciate that we can use APS lenses for FX30. This can work like other full frame cameras, but we can build the system lighter, smaller, cheaper, relatively, than full frame cameras. And I think the possibility to bring the camera outside gets high because of that size and weight. And for people who want to start, it gets easier to start. But the quality is guaranteed with FX30. So now, let's end this video with one formula. Small, light, budget. I mean, small plus, light plus, budget equal more chances to use equal more great results okay that's it if you have any questions just shoot me anytime anywhere and if you like this video hit the like and subscribe i will see you in the next video Ciao.